You are tuned in to Making a Difference with Melissa Billy Clark. This show shares compelling stories and experiences of well-known faces and everyday people who change the world in big and small ways. Get ready to open your mind and your heart with Melissa Billy Clark. Thank you for joining us on Making a Difference. I'm Melissa Billy Clark. Today with us is a Nobel Prize nominee. She is a neuroscientist, an innovator, author, educator, and not to mention a genius who is changing the way with how we detect brain tumors and diagnose such as Parkinson's and epilepsy with her patent invention, the Broderick Probe. Dr. Broderick, thank you so much for joining us today on Making a Difference. How are you? I'm just great. How does it feel when somebody calls you a genius? All of your peers have been calling you a genius for yes. decades. For decades. So how, so how does it feel well, when you hear that now? Now it feels great. I didn't know what to do with it. I just thought, oh my goodness, I still have so much work to do. I'm not finished yet. I'm only beginning. No matter how much I have done, I have to do more. I never feel adequate. But now, Melissa, when you just called me genius, I think to myself, it's true. So in the past, I didn't think it was untrue, but I didn't relate to it as well. I didn't relate to it at all, to tell you the truth. I just kept on doing what I was doing and being happy and healthy and enjoying life, et cetera, et cetera. But now, thrilled. I'm thrilled that you said that. I'm thrilled with your introduction. I'm not like putting my head down and just, yeah. And no, I didn't do that. I looked straight at the camera and I nodded my head. Yes, you're right. That's I, right. I, I did all of that. Yeah. And I, you and I had a, a part of my interruption, but you and I had a yeah. conversation and you said, now I can actually call myself beautiful. I am smart. I am changing the world. And I love that, Dr. Broderick. I think it took me a long time to get where I am to have the confidence that I felt because you're, you are very bright and you know what you're doing to help others and to make a difference, being an educator, a professor, an author, sky's the limit. Yeah. I compare you to Albert Einstein. Oh. You're that a living is, Albert Einstein right now because you do work so hard to find ways to help science and people. Thank you. Yeah, because I analyzed everything. There's nothing I don't study. Things are popping into my brain every single second. You know, how I can do this, how I can do that. Then I'm showing how I can do it. Oh, and I just, we just mentioned that yesterday, right at the end, Eric Mastrada has sent me the article and I am flipping out. I still have the same excitement that I had early on. The excitement never ends. I, and the excitement never ends when I'm doing the studies. The excitement never ends when I have this tiny little probe smaller than a human hair into the brain of an animal or the brain of a patient. And yes. signals are coming online right in front of our eyes. And I love it. I love it. We're going we're gonna to get to that. I, want, I can't wait to get to this invention yes. that you created to help others uh, yes. and to break science, really. But before we get into that, Dr. Broderick, I loved yes. that you are interested and fascinated with individuals' behaviors. And what makes them tick or why do they yeah. think it's okay to behave poorly when someone isn't doing anything to stir them up? I've had many people like that in my life. And I always wondered, and you call it quote unquote nasty. Yeah. You're being actually kind. You're being very kind. And I love that. Yes. Uh, yes. So my question to you is what part of the brain is that? Are we born that way? Can it also be environmental? You and I are both New Yorkers. Yes. And can we redirect our minds to stay positive? Yes, we are New Yorkers. Yes. <laughs> if you can't make it here, you can't make it anywhere. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that we have to be unkind and swear at one another. So that, I was that's very exactly interested. right. Yeah. So, yeah, when I started my PhD, I asked the question 
can nasty people ever become nice? Yeah, that was my question because it fascinated me. Why are people so nasty when they do not need to be nasty? There's no need for it. Some of us have a lot of encephalins in our brain. You specifically asked for the part of the brain. The part of the brain that causes that anger is called the septum. It's S-E-P-T-U-M. That's one part. The amygdala, it has to do with emotion. You know that the brain takes care of everything. The cortex. See, if you touch your cortex here, this is your prefrontal cortex here. Right behind your forehead, there, this is the cortex. So this skull is actually touching the chief executive officer. This is the chief executive officer of the brain. Prefrontal cortex and the cortex. And this is how I teach my 200. I tell them exactly where everything is in everyday life. And I had a student say, I have a pain in my temporal lobe, right? <laughs> right between the two ears. I want everybody to talk about the brain just the same way as you talk about, oh, it's raining out. Oh, it's snowing out. That it's we important. Be so alive and in tune with each and every part of our brain and what part. So I love the question that you have just asked me, which part of the brain, the septum and the amygdala. See, the, the cortex is the chief executive officer telling everybody what to do. The temporal lobe is from ear to ear, from headphone to headphone. Yeah. And the hippocampus is right here behind your right ear and behind your left ear. There are neurons in there that you can just memorize right behind the right ear. I have students who are B students, they become A students because I tell them these are neurons and they can memorize for you. And you know what? This probe also helps your memory get better. Yeah. I love that you did this because you don't want to work on cadavers. This Because you're like, it's dead. There's really nothing that, and I'm sorry, my computer keeps freezing, but I'm not going to edit anything because I love this uh, chemistry between Dr. Brodnick and I. So yes. you can, yeah, and they can hear this on iHeartRadio and Spotify, and you can watch it on our YouTube channel as well. And you could see this beautiful woman. But yeah, you would rather work on live. And that's why you started this, yes. this project. So tell us about that's the right. probe yeah. and the countless hours that you've worked. Uh, Thank on you. This. Yeah, I, I saw that all the work was being done after death. So after death, we do not have the same kind of a brain at all. So I set out to do something nobody else did. I wanted to find a way to look at the brain without having the person or the animal die. That's what I did. And this is the thing I came up with. So I'll show, it's named after my father. Father is Patty Broderick. And just briefly, without being sad over it, without bringing anybody down, he was killed on Christmas Eve when I had just turned seven years old. On Christmas, so did that change my life? I believe it did. I wanted to do this for him. And so this one is ready for market. We're on the front page of National Digest. Amazing. And the writer, Eric Mistrata, he doesn't expect any credit, but I always give everybody credit. Mm, uh, last night on my TV show, we mentioned Melissa Billy Clark and what a nice conversation I had with you. Thank and you I so couldn't much. wait to meet you Thank today. You. Now, you. I decided to take one out for you. This okay? is amazing. Now, uh, it, look at this is what blows everybody's mind. Mm -hmm. I have to get my bearing right here. It's at the tip. How do you do this procedure to someone? Okay. We have several different kinds. We have the kind that just, if you think about the epilepsy patient, mm -hmm. the epilepsy patient is refractory to the drugs. No drug works. It makes them sick. It doesn't stop the seizures and it makes them sick. So they have to have surgery. They have to have temporal lobe surgery. We were in the operating room with the patient and we were studying the brain while the patient is alive and calm and in that situation under anesthesia. So this tiny little thing, smaller than a human hair, just barely tips barely tips the cortex. It's just two microns. 
Think about microns. Think about millimeters. Think about inches. Okay. One inch is 2.5 centimeters. Now, if you're talking about a millimeter, you're talking about this much, this little space here. Now, to get a millimeter, you have to divide that up into a thousand parts. And then to get another, take one of those millimeters, you have to divide that up into another thousand parts. And this is smaller than that, it's smaller than the microns, smaller than the millimeters. You cannot see it with the naked eye. And so in the operating room, the epilepsy probe is very long. As a matter of fact, the pathologist wrote, the epilepsy probe harms the brain. And what? he wrote, and, he, and I don't know the pathologist. And he wrote, the broader probe doesn't harm the brain. There's no scarring. There's no nothing. There's no mark from it. And it's just barely there, barely there at the cortex. And, and I can see all the scans online, right on the computer, neurotransmitters coming out. And in live time, and that's, and it never loses its fascination. Never. Wow. Uh, As opposed to going through an MRI, doing yes, whatever, then you have yes, to wait. So yes. this is quick. Oh, yes. In the laboratory, when you're doing other studies, then you have to freeze it for two weeks. Then you wait for something else for three weeks. And what I found doing that, I did my studies, some of my studies as a postdoctoral fellow, I did them in the freezer itself. Wow. I was really freezing cold in there. I had my jeans on and a double jacket, but I really didn't want, and that's the old time doing wait. That's the old time way. And I just didn't want anything to happen to the sample. So I stayed right in there with it. I almost froze to death. Oh my God, you devoted your life to this. You sacrificed yourself I, for that. I have, you know, I've done every kind of sacrifice there is for this. And then I, this cannot go on because we know that the samples, respectful of everybody, we know how the human brain can fail. Sometimes we're tired. Now, can you imagine all the mistakes are made when a separate set of vials are marked cocaine and a separate set are marked no cocaine and they get the vials mixed up here you, you cannot get mixed up this just goes near the brain not even barely in the brain and my latest one the one that i want the man i did all the prototypes and everything everything and all the manufacturer i had a santa's little workshop in my laboratory yeah. all the medical students just love it and the city college undergraduate students in the Macaulay Honors. So I wanted to teach everybody. You didn't have to be a Macaulay Honors student to be in my lab. I want to teach everybody. Everybody who comes to me, I take care of. And I never once had to advertise for yeah. any kind of position. Everybody calls me. Word I'd of have mouth. A... Word of mouth. People are getting to know what you do. Exactly. And it works. And they get it to work. And then somebody else wants it. So now... The next one, the next generation to, to treat tumors in the brain because it, the surgeon can't find the tumor when it moves from the gray matter to the white matter. He cannot find it because the MRI, the water gets stuck. MRI cannot see the water. The water blurs the screen. It just, it's like a computer screen. The water blurs the screen. They can't see the white matter. So they went and they tried to get something else, diffusion tensor. And okay, they can see a little bit better. You still have to go through the tunnel. You still have to pay $6 million. <laughs> but one, do you think that they're going to pay $6 million for this Broderick probe? Absolutely not. This is affordable. This is compatible, biocompatible. This is ready for the market. Does the insurance and company cover? The insurance company will cover it as soon as I get going on it. When Broderick speaks her word and she puts right. all of her effort into the insurance companies. Yes. As a matter of fact, I started out working with India. I have an Indian colleague 
who went to, he had his cousins go to the Indian Angel Company over there. And they went to a couple of companies over in India and they were all screaming over this. And all they right. said, when can we get in touch with Dr. Broderick? When can we get in touch with her? Well, that was Amr Sethi, who happens to be a cousin to Paul Sethi, who works with Cisco Technician. And he said, oh, it's two o'clock in the morning in New York. Don't wake up, Dr. Broderick. You work around the clock. <laughs> Your brain doesn't stop. And for good reason. Yes. Because of everything yeah. that you do. Yeah. You're talking countless books and you have a book coming out that we're going to talk about <laughs> yes. a little bit later in the show. So this is incredible. And now you, what you need are grants though also, because you've gotten humongous grants in the past, but now you yes. still need more yes. money to fund this. Correct. That's mm -hmm. exactly right. So we need grants and I got one done very short time ago, two weeks ago. Actually, it was October the 28th that it was due and we made it. The dean said, look, you have a superpower brain there. Put it to work and get a grant done in one month. So I did. Wow. And so that's the kind of thing that I'll do. Mark, the fellow, Mark Scullin in the university, he has a lot of talent, though. I could not have done it without him. You have uh, a team of people that you work with, right? Yes, mm -hmm. yes, a great team, a great team. And so what we're looking for with the new generation, we can, with these, the new generation, I'm going to show this to you once more. This is the one I just took out. And it's gamma irradiated. You never have to worry about it. The gamma irradiation won't hurt. But we gamma irradiate milk. And that's why it lasts so long. What I'm going to do is, this is so small. This isn't even the probe. The probe is way here at the tip. Wow. Wow. So this is, uh, so I just want to ask a question. I'm yeah. coming in. I have epilepsy and I want to get this procedure done. Do they put you under anesthesia? You get a... Do they put it in your, you, they drill a hole or something? Just for someone who wants to get an idea of how this goes in. Okay. Now, what they do in the epilepsy center is great, but it's not new. Okay. It's old. They open up the brain when the epilepsy probe goes in. And when this just barely, it slides over the surface and gives you a picture of the waveform. It gives you a picture of the waveform, and then nothing happens to the brain. Nothing happens to the probe. And the, you get a picture online in real time, and the picture, the neurons go back to where they were before. Interesting. And then, yes, so nothing is lost. One, my competing technologies, they lose part of the brain. So we're going to put the smallest photo dot, we're going to, See, we're going to put a photodiode right here. Smallest photodiode in the world will be on the smallest probe in the world. And now I had, and the patent is issued already. This patent is issued. I'm going to say, um, because I really did it. When it comes right down to it, even though I've been surrounded by wonderful people, except for the few nasty ones, yeah. <laughs> uh, but we're going to have those. Yeah. But what we want now is a manufacturer. Because I have a company, Easy Sense. And yes, we're poor in money, but we are rich in stocks. We have 200 stocks that we would like to share with people in the world. I always work very well with people I, with, I, I never met. As a matter of fact, I never hire people I already know. Every moment of my life is like my moment with you. We're just meeting for the yes. first time. Our minds are meeting. We're seeing what it is we need, what it is we have to have, and then things happen. That's how it happens with my whole life. We can say we're perfect strangers because we're not even strangers now. I feel as if I know you. And that's what happens to everybody yes. as far as I'm concerned. I love people. I think that comes through. I think we can all work together. And instead of people just helping to build a new genre, the new generation of all of these and plus bear on the other ones, we can share stock. Yeah. Then everybody wants to succeed. Then we can help MRI. We don't have to take the market away. We don't have to. 
we can help them. If I put gadolinium in here, if I can take the formulas, I have a thousand formulas, and we can take the gadolinium, put it here, and then the MRI can go faster. The protons will move faster. See, with the MRI, they're studying protons. With the Broderick probe, we're studying electrons. And water doesn't get in the way of electrons. So it'd be and, nice and if everybody can work together. Exactly. And nothing is being taken away from anybody. That's the whole thing. Exactly. That's the competition. That's competition That's in exactly science. Right. That's mm -hmm. the competition. And I don't understand where it comes from. Because yeah. I cannot, well, see, I'm showing you everything. I'm showing, I'm telling you everything. And it doesn't frighten me that I have 10 patents and I'm afraid somebody's going to take it. No, because you have to work with the other person to really do it right. That's so right. If, if you want to steal something and you have it in your hand and you stole it, oh, look, I got it from her. I stole it. But then what do you do with it until you call her up and say, hey, Patricia, I just stole your probe. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> They're not going to know. They need yeah. your help so okay. everybody can collide and get together and make science better and make the patient more comfortable and find out yes. exactly what's happening in real right. time. So now right. you, so Dr. Broderick is also a professor. You are a medical professor at the CUNY School of Medicine. What is it that you want your students to take away from your learning? Oh, I want to take the, I wanted them to take away the ability that they have to change the world, just like I did. I grew up in the South Bronx. I grew up in a poor family. I actually was asked by the Albert Einstein College of Medicine to join them. I didn't ask them. They asked me. I was asked by NYU Langone Medical Center to join them. I grew up in a poor family in the South Bronx. That's where I grew up. Yeah. And I had a happy life. I've always had a happy life. You can see it in my eyes right now. <laughs> <laughs> and you're always smiling, despite the fact that your father passed away on Christmas. Eve. So yeah, you're always smiling through it all. I believe that you believe in hope then, right? I believe in hope. Yeah. I believe in God. So do I. And that's okay to say that on this program, because it's, <laughs> when I say you can always believe in God or whoever, as long as you have a connection to something, my father is deceased as well. Both of my parents are. Yes. But he used to say, as long as you're connected to God or whomever, you're never doing this alone. And I believe that you have a lot of angels with you because you're not doing this alone. It's exactly it's a lot right. for one person to do what you do. And exactly right. So. That's exactly right. Yeah. Yes. And then you named Billy, the Billy part of your show name is yeah. after your father. Yes. So I feel a camaraderie right there. Because of your father with Patty. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I love that. We like to yeah. honor people and, and I'd like to honor you at this moment because you're incredible what you're doing and what you do to help people. And I wanted to ask you, you and I discussed women in science and how you felt oh, uh, yeah, that you needed to play it safe and not shine or bring big ideas to the table. So I've heard this from a lot of women doctors. Do you think it's the ego of others holding us down or is it that we feel like we're going to fail ourselves? I think, it's the, I think it's the ego of others. I think that anybody who's realistic has to stop and say, Oh my God, I'm so glad I can do this. Oh, I hope I never fail. You mentioned that I'm a candidate for the Nobel. Yeah, that came straight from the Karolinska Institute in Stockholm, Sweden, from somebody I never met. The person is a doctor in Germany. I'm, I don't think if I'm, I think I'm allowed to say the name. It was Dr. Alice McCarty. She wants to, she wanted to see women get the Nobel Prize. Mm -hmm. She did. And she actually nominated me and two others. And they nominate about 3,000 people. They have a committee of 50 people that they send out. They send out their emissaries every January to find the people who are making a difference, to find the people who have started out to do something different and they stuck to it. That's another thing we need. And that's another thing I think we have as women. 
we have grit. <laughs> yes. One of my students said, look, I think you're smart and I think you're pretty, but you know what? The thing that I like about you the most is you have grit. That's right. You're a go-getter. You don't, you don't yeah. stop. You don't stop because you yeah. can't stop. That's right. I had yes. to stay up all night for a month without taking a break to get that grant done. So thing is crossed. That grant is about paralysis, about helping epidural spinal cord patients, about helping people who are living alone and all of it, and all their lives, they were independent. They were happy. Now, all of a sudden, they can't take that dish from the top of the closet. Right. Oh, my God, the depression that they feel. And with this probe, we can actually see depression that not anxiety that's not that's the anxiety that goes with parkinson's the anxiety that goes with with being sick and not doing what you were able to do before that's right, that's right. And, and, and we can see it and we can see it on the computer we can see a profile and you know what's next is to go from the computer to the cell phone this is what's going to happen next we're going to take the signal from the computer. I'm all choked up with happiness here. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna take this signal from the computer and put it on our cell phone. And so we're not only gonna see the heart rate on our cell phones that we can see now, we're gonna see the brain on our cell phone. And oh. Broderick, it's Broderick, the daughter of Pratty Broderick, who actually took care of doing this. We're going to do it. I would so love philanthropists, investors. We do have a company. It's a baby company, but this started out as a baby. You Where started can, as a baby. I started out as a baby. Can they go to easysense.com to find out how they can help you and fund? So it's w.eazysense.com. Yes. They can go there and, but better still, they go there and see what I'm about. You'll see that I'm an Irish American, first generation Irish American, a kid from the South Bronx who went all through school, who was, had the privilege of being in Cornell and Albert Einstein at college. We, and I have an Iranian student coming here to New York, mentioned to her, my mother and father didn't go to school really, not really. Of course, not in Ireland. One, one of 14 children, the other of one of 11. But I have the smartest parents in the world. And she said, you do, because they were smart enough to have, to give you birth here in this country. That's really nice. <laughs> That's very nice. And so she will come to America. This is where, and she wants to come to New York, even though it is the most. Her sister is in California, where it's yeah. laid back. It's so stressful. But she wants New York. She wants the pro. She wants the excitement. That's right. She wants to learn from the best, which is you. Oh. And yeah, that really, I looked up. If you just Google Dr. Patricia yes. Broderick, you will see oh. all the information on her. And she's been on shows and have articles written about her. So please check that out. Now yes. you have a book in process titled Bioimaging in Neuro Degeneration. Yes. Uh -huh. Which, uh, what was your goal for not only the reader, but for a doctor in medicine to understand, take away and grow from, from you and your team? My goal, uh, Manipress, which now has become Springer Nature, you Manipress, the people, actually, that was Don Odom who approached me. We are actually still friends. And Melissa, that was 23 years ago and mm -hmm. we're still a friends. He approached me. He said, I heard about your brain. I heard about your probe. I heard about what you're doing. And we would love you to write a, I said, a book. Oh, okay. I never wrote a book. <laughs> and he said, no worries. You can just start out and do it. I said, I can. He said, so what do you want to write on? I said, you know what I want to write on? I want to write on technology, but not on this technology only but on every single technology that is available to each and every one of us, whether by insurance or not, okay? Mm. We will get the insurance for this. And when I started out working with India, 
we figured out a way that they could get the surgery free and the government would pay for it. So when we're not going to do that right now, but I don't see any reason why I can't do that in the United States either. Oh, sure. There's no reason because I have to go to the FDA. I have all of the data. And of course, we'll find a person. That's another reason why we need to raise the funds. We need to have a person on the FDA side, knowing the FDA, in order to put this through the FDA, and then we get the insurance. So everything is in my brain, in a circle, in a pie chart. Okay, this is what I have to do. This is, and this is how I started. And so I said, okay, Don, I'll give you a book. But I won't only write on mine. I'll write on every technology there is. And I did lots of work on MRI. I really know it. And I figured out a way that this could help the MRI. Yeah. So that's what I do. I'm inclusive. That's what we want. We want to work with everybody. We need the funding to do that. And we need the funding to... I did all the prototypes here. Okay. Now the days are going, I go 24 hours, I have to go 48 hours. So now we need to hire a manufacturer, a manufacturer who will just take the, I'll just show them exactly what to do. She had the patents. That one was just issued. We got two issued in 2000, just December, just December. And oh, we have another patent now in July. And that patent takes part of this because we're able to take the molecules that cause aging in the brain. I can see them. The MRI cannot see them yet. I took a part of this and figured out how to take the aging out of the skin to make your skin plump. That's how you make it plump. So there's many aging things out now. It's incredible. Uh, Yes, but they don't take the aging part out. Like they cover up the skin, but they right. don't take the, And so that just went to the United States Patent and Trademark Office. So exactly. that's like every second. Every second I can, I have right now figured out a way that I can take care of macular degeneration. So I'm about to call Jim Harrington at Hoffman and Barron because he's been interested in a while and he asked me to write a patent on that. I, I almost, I texted him the other day, but then I got busy. So I didn't do it. I said, right after the Melissa Billy Clark, I'm going to call Jen and tell him that I can do this with electrochemistry. You are incredible. Up again. <laughs> there you go. You're incredible. So I can't thank you enough for being on this program. I'm completely honored and I can't wait until you are, everything blows up and this, yes. this gets going. Yes. yes. We've got to get it going now. Now is the time. Yeah. I'm yeah. on the Melissa Billy Clark show. Sure. National Digest is out. I'm about to tell them, go to press. It's the front page. That's we have right. to get it out in 2022. Singapore book out in 2022. Springer Nature book out in 20, 2023 or even 2024. The way to get me is through the Broderick Brain Foundation. This is how you can get me really good. You can call me 212-650-5479. You can call me. That number is published in the university. Okay. So what is the number again then? 212-650-5479. Yeah. Okay, great. And you were actually this year's patient preferred physician too. Yes, yes. You were on the cover of Preferred Health Magazine. Yes. Wow. Yes. You go. Yeah. You're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> when is um, your book actually coming out? I would say two months. Now, it's already accepted and 13 chapters have gone to the Singapore. It's a monograph. So I wrote the whole thing, did the references, everything. I put in there all the feelings that I had as I was inventing things. And at the same time, I tell everybody, even though it's patented, exactly how I did the circuit, exactly how I do the pro, exactly how I do all the different things. All they have to do is take the book and they can do it. They can call me. I can help them. Of right. course, they would have to help me 
and they would have to help the university because we have to stay together. That's we can't just take, we have to give back. And so I like that. I like that very much. And that's why you succeed. There's a lot of takers out there, not many givers. (laughs) We thank you so much for being on Making a Difference and you're amazing. Please head over to www.eazysense.com and learn more about Dr. Patricia Broderick. And I just want to give you the address. My voice is my voice is going because I had a show last night and yeah. I have your great show today. I teach by about three hours tomorrow, then a faculty meeting. And you so, have a show that streams on YouTube. I'm sorry. You have a show that streams on YouTube every Wednesdays yes, at 8 p.m. The Andy Sense that. show. Yeah. But now here's a good address. The voice is going. I teach 200 students tomorrow morning for three hours. And it's wow. wonderful. It's wonderful. Mm-hmm. It's very easy. Yeah. It's, it's E-A-Z-Y. Yeah. All right. To the Broderick Brain Foundation at P.O. Box 596, Bronx, New York, 10465. Because this is a charitable donation. That's another point to bring out. The funding is a charitable donation. The Easy Sense Company is the profit arm of the Broderick Brain Foundation that came about again because of my giving. My aunt Lillian Broderick gave six of us $20,000 each when she died. Okay, I took the $20,000. We sat down with the family. I said, no car. We're not buying any car with this. Cars come and go. Who cares about cars? I like a nice one. I have a cute Acura, but it's not important. I want something that lives after my father and have the Broderick. So let's do this foundation. Let us send my students all over the world to proclaim not only about this, but to proclaim about themselves and get and have themselves get good jobs and all of that money has gone to the students in my lab who have learned this. So that is then the Broderick Brain Foundation. And it is at P.O. Box 596, Bronx, New York, 10465. And that is a charitable donation. So you write to me and then I will write you a letter. And that is a tax deduction without a doubt. And then for the Easy Sense Profit Arm, I'm trying to take care of everybody. Here's where we have the philanthropist. The philanthropist can go everywhere, but the investor wants to go to the company because he wants something back right away. And he wants a percentage on the sales. And we do have a person interested on changing the whole board. And again, I'm not getting rid of anybody. I am, but I am moving the board towards people who know money and who know finance and who know how to get it because the investors will make a lot of money on this. When I started out the business plan, I just said, this is worth a million dollars. I'm starting a new business plan. This is worth a billion dollars. And I have that information from the wealth management people. It's worth a billion dollars now. So the investors can make a lot of money. So we're looking for investors Manufacturers (laughs) manufacturers <laughs> and philanthropists. Okay. You're amazing. Thank you so much for being on this show. Thank you so Thank much, you. Dr. Broderick. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you, Melissa Billy Clark. Thank you. You are fabulous. <laughs> so okay. you. Thank you. This episode is sponsored by Preferred Health Magazine. Hi, I'm Angelina Cappiello, publisher and editor in chief of Preferred Health Magazine. PHM hosts interviews with today's top physicians, experts in the healthcare industry, and some of today's most beloved celebrities. So head on over to www.preferredhealthmagazine.com today to receive your free digital subscription. And be sure to catch me on our new podcast, Talking Points with Preferred Health Magazine, streaming now on Spotify and YouTube. Thank you for tuning in to Making a Difference. I'm your host, Melissa Billy Clark. If you'd like to learn more about our show, please visit our website at melissabillyclarkshow.com. If you'd like to sponsor or be a guest, email melissa at melissaclarkshow.com. Let's make a difference together.